In most top level sports car racing, you have two distinct types of car. You have a GT car, which is, in essence, a more hardcore, race-ready version of the supercars that a lot of us would dream to own. However, usually there is a faster type of car above them, referred to generally as prototypes. Whilst you can occasionally get row-going versions of these cars, prototypes are much more bespoke machines, built to certain regulations depending on the racing series they're taking part in. Typically, the prototypes are the faster class of car, in fact, they're usually much faster. Even if prototypes are more fragile reliability-wise, they will still claim an overall victory. Well, mostly. It's 2003. The event is one of America's most prestigious races, the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. A brand new class of prototypes was introduced for this race. Part of the Grand Am Rolex sports car series, the new type of car would be called DP, short for Daytona Prototype. These were created as a way of making the category's premier class safer and more cost-effective. So unlike the previous generation of prototypes in the Grand Am series, these cars would have closed cockpits, and an enormous amount of the car would be cost-controlled. So for example, the teams could not develop their cars over a season, and would be forced to use the same basic car. The prototype chassis would be created by seven manufacturers specifically chosen by Grand Am. Whilst it could be designed how the manufacturers wanted, they had to have smaller dimensions to a Le Mans prototype, which meant that the noses of the Daytona prototypes were a bit more squished than a Le Mans prototype, which in turn made the speeds slower. The engines would also be regulated in that the teams would have to pick an engine from the following list on the screen right now and then fit that to their chassis, so long as it was compliant. All of this in a bid to have better cost control. However, despite the drop in speed, and that the GTS cars in qualifying performance were lapping faster, one, the DP cars were told to start up front, and two, when it came to race pace, the DPs were a bit faster. Also, just as a quick heads up on the GT class divisions in this race, GTS was the class for cars that complied with GT1 and GT2 global regulations, whilst GT was basically for cars that would nowadays comply for GT3 regulations. I do love endurance racing, but goodness me, it's hard to explain sometimes. Anyway, the race got underway with the Multimatic DP of Scott Maxwell, David Emperingham and David Brabham leading the field to green. However, not even 16 laps into the race, and one of the six DP cars entered for the race had suffered problems. The GNW Motorsports car, driven at the time by Boris Said, suffered an electrical issue, which would put them several laps down and immediately out of the running. Then, not too long later, the Conrad Motorsports Celine S7 GTS car, what an awesome car by the way, had a terrifying spin coming out of the trioval and in turn got stuck in the grass they would get going again and finish the race. The pulsating Multimatic car would then suffer engine issues. On lap 67 though, the first DP retirement occurred, for the Bell Motorsports number no. 54 Chevrolet powered Duran. Around 80 laps later, the Brumos Fab car number no. 59 suffered problems trying to avoid a spinning RWS Motorsport GTS Porsche, and got damage in the undertray, costing it several laps. After some more of the usual multi-class endurance racing antics, the second Brumos Porsche gave up the ghost on lap 160, which meant that the number 66 Racers Group Porsche GT class car, yes not the GTS class, was in the lead of the race ahead of the 59 Brumos Porsche by over a lap. For hours the two traded the lead every pit stop. However, an electrical issue put a dampener on the Brumos car's chances, resulting in it being 15 laps down. Several more hours down and with no Daytona prototypes in sight, the number 66 Racers Group Porsche kept on going. But the number 68 Porsche ran by the same team would end up having a monumental crash. Remarkably, Jim McAlian was not too shaken up after an accident that saw his Porsche demolish a section of guardrail and end up on its side. The following caution period meant that one of the DPs, the Multimatic car, would end up on the same lap as the leading Porsche, only for the car to get spun out on the following restart. 
The car then had a brake change, which put it further laps down, which then rendered any overall victory not on impossible. One car which was cool to see in this race was the Marcos Mantis, driven by Cor User. Unfortunately, the car lost power steering and would be classified as a DNF. Another 90 minutes passed by, free of any major incident, which just left the number 66 GT class Porsche from the racers group, driven by Kevin Buckler, Michael Schromm, York Bergmeister, and Timo Bernhard, to take an overall win in the 2003 Daytona 24 Hours. The first time this had ever happened in the history of the event. In fact, they won by over 9 laps over their nearest competitor, the Risi Competizione GT Class Ferrari in second overall, who in turn were a couple of laps ahead of the car in third, another GT Class Porsche by Renworks Motorsports. Fourth overall was the nearest Daytona prototype by Multimatic. And what about the GTS cars, which were quicker than the GT and even DP cars in qualifying speed? Well, that would be in 9th overall by Perspective Racing with its Mosler. However, it was 54 laps down on the overall winning Porsche. So in theory, the slowest class of car on the grid won the race overall. When has that ever happened at the top echelons of sports car racing? In fact, when prototypes have been involved, when was the last time a GT car of any sort won a Daytona 24 hours? Well, actually it wasn't that long before then. Just two years prior, Corvette won in a GTS car, and then a year earlier than that, a Dodge Viper in the GTO class, basically what GTS was called prior to GTS, won the race by the French Oracle team. Both those victories were in GTS cars, however, so it does make the Racers Group Porsche's GT effort all the more impressive. Yes, it was incredibly attritional, but that's part of the course in endurance racing. This, though, is the last time a non-prototype has won this race, and if the current regulations are anything to go by, then achievements such as these will take potentially decades before we see anything like this ever again. That though is going to be it for this video, thank you very much for watching. What are your thoughts on this race, and what are your thoughts on GT cars taking the overall victory over much faster prototypes? Is it a cool story for the race, or do you think it's a poor reflection on the prototype class that such a scenario was possible? Say what you think in the comment section. However, until the next video, enjoy the rest of your day.